Welcome back to the third video of the course. We have already laid down the foundation in the previous video about where we are headed in the hour of discussion. We had discussed amplitude, wavelength and frequency. Oh wait, I think we missed out wavelength. So wavelength is the distance between successive crests of a wave. Troughs can also be used in the place of crests and the definition will still stand true. Let's discuss how these waves behave in the rest of the video. Radio signals in general are affected in many ways by objects in their path and by the media through which they travel. This means that radio signal propagation is of importance to anyone designing or operating a radio system. When you were a kid, have you ever thrown a stone in a pond or a puddle and seen the ripples that are formed? The ripple motion is exactly how R propagates. For a more complicated example, you can consider the earthquake moving away from the epicenter. If you closely notice those water ripples, there are troughs and crests present in them as we described earlier. There is a whole lot to discuss in radio wave propagation patterns, but this is not in the scope of this training module. I will probably make a separate video on that soon. There are various factors that affect the RF wave and its propagation. Let's discuss them in detail. To start with, I am going to use very simple definitions and related to RF so it will be easier for us to correlate. Absorption Absorption is defined as the process when one thing becomes part of another thing or the process of something soaking either literally or figuratively. Best example, sponge and water used together. I think this example does not require any further explanation. Here is a diagram that explains how our waves are absorbed. Here are some stats on absorption. A 2.4 GHz signal will be 1 16th the original power after propagating through a brick wall. That same signal will only lose half the original power after passing through a dry wall. When an object like a ball is thrown against a rigid wall, it bounces back. This reflection of an object can be analyzed in terms of momentum and energy conservation. Waves also carry momentum and energy, therefore behave the same with reflective obstacles. Here is a diagram to display the reflection phenomenon. Reflection can be a cause of serious performance problems in a legacy A22.11, AB and G wireless lands. As a wave radiates from an antenna, it broadens and disperses. If portions of this wave are reflected, new wave fronts will appear from the reflection points. If these multiple waves all reach the receiver, the multiple reflected signals cause an effect called multipath. Most of the smooth surfaces cause reflection. We will look at the concept of multipath at a later stage in this video. Scattering Scattering is a general physical process where waves are forced to deviate from a straight trajectory. Scattering can almost be described by the term multiple reflections. Do you remember the prism experiment in which the scattering of white light was explained? If not, a good analogy would be the first shot on a snooker table which breaks the ball triangle. Consider the white ball as the initial wave. Now consider the other balls moving in different directions This part of the initial wave as scattered. Here is a diagram displaying that phenomenon. Refraction Refraction is the change in the direction of waves that occurs when the waves travel from one medium to another. Refraction is always accompanied by wavelength and speed change. Imagine the same snooker table left with one white ball and one colored ball. The white ball is the initial wave. When the ball hits the edge of the other ball, the motion of the colored ball is now the refracted wave. In this analogy, the speed change of waves cannot be shown or seen but there is a speed change of waves in refraction. Some examples of refraction in outdoor environments are air temperature and air pressure changes. Some examples of refraction in indoor environments are certain types of glass. On the other hand, diffraction is the bending of waves around obstacles and opening. A good analogy is a partially submerged rock lying in the middle of the riverbed. The water moves around the rock, therefore displaying a diffractive pattern. Partial blockage of the RF signal usually causes diffraction. 
loss and gain. These are two words you will be hearing a lot in your wireless career. Loss or attenuation is defined as the weakening of the RF signal or wave. This can be caused by many factors such as the ones we discussed a while ago. Gain can be simply put as the increase in signal strength or amplitude in wave terminology. There are two types of gains, passive and active. Passive gain is achieved by moving the antenna in a specific direction to improve the signal or wave strength. Active gain is achieved by introducing an amplifier in the path of the signal to improve the signal or wave strength. A type of loss which is part of each wave that propagates through any medium is called free space path loss. The way in which we lose our strength when we run for long distances is the same as the way in which the RF wave loses its strength as it travels further from its source. Let's go back to the base analogy of the wave, the ripples in the pond. The waves start to disappear as they travel further from the center. If you want to know more about this loss, please visit the below link. Another important concept before we wrap up the video is called multipath. Multipath is a propagation phenomenon of a wave. It results in two more paths of a signal arriving at the receiving antenna at the same time or very short intervals to each other. When a signal encounters an object, it may reflect, scatter, refract or diffract. These propagation behaviors can all result in multiple paths of the same signal. I plan to make a detailed video on this phenomenon and further discuss it when taking up the topic of the dot 11 n standard. To summarize, we have discussed wave propagation behaviors such as reflection, absorption, refraction, diffraction and scattering in this video. These concepts will set a strong foundation for the upcoming wireless discussions that we will have. See you all in the next video.